Now someone comes in and says, how brutal, how unjust you are, that you are killing that person. And this person doesn't know that the person who's being elect electrocuted or who's being killed at this time has killed 10 other people. And as a result of that, he's being killed. Now when you say that, when you explain that, then this person will calm down and he will say, oh, okay, so he's paying for his crimes. He's paying for what he has done. But you present the other picture, other side of the picture, and it leaves a totally different impression on the mind of that person. Same thing with Islam. Peep, the media takes things out of context and it tries to portray Islam in that, in, in that picture, which is not the real picture, which is not the true picture, which is not the complete picture. So when the four witnesses have testified, فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ Then strain, uh, strain them, confine them in their homes. حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّاهُنَّ الْمَوْتِ Until death takes them. أَوْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُنَّ سَبِيلًا Or Allah ordains for them another way. This is the very first verse according to the majority of scholars which was revealed uh, in regards to the punishment for a woman who has committed zina. This is not the last verse. So this punishment is not there anymore. I'll tell you that up front. That this punishment that has been mentioned in this verse is not there anymore. In the beginning of Islam, this was the punishment of that woman who had committed zina, that she should be arrested in her house, she should be imprisoned in the house, and she should not be allowed to leave in any case. Until death takes her, until she dies there, and in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated that there will be another way that will come later, that will follow this verse. Or Allah ordains for them another way. And that happened. Later, another, another verse came that abrogated the ruling that is mentioned here and replaced it with another ruling and that was if the woman who committed adultery if she was who committed zina if she was an unmarried woman then she should be uh, she should be applied 100 lashes and if she is uh, if she was married woman then she should be stoned as it was the punishment for the men so the punishment was same the next verse, minkum, And the two who committed among you, فَآذُوهُمَا Dishonor them both. Means, when two people have done something like that, then they both should be dishonored in the society. People should not give them the honor and respect that would, that would only encourage them and make them brave on their discourse of disobedience. So their path of disobedience should not be strengthened by giving them support, by giving them encouragement. They should be discouraged, they should be dishonored, and they should be disrespected. So they would understand that they have done something wrong. If you, if you encourage the criminal and you promote the, the criminal, then the criminal would only be strengthened to do more of that crime. But if he is discouraged, if he is punished, if he is dishonored, if he is reminded of that, then he will be discouraged. فَإِن تَابَ وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَعْرِضُ عَنْهُمَا However, if they have repented and corrected themselves, reformed themselves, then leave them alone. Don't bother them. Don't bother them for the rest of their life. If a criminal has repented sincerely 
and corrected himself, reformed himself. So the repentance will always come with reformation. If someone says that I have repented but continues to do the same thing, he has not repented and he has not reformed. So if someone has repented, he will re reform himself. He will correct himself. If someone says, I have stopped stealing, I have repented, but he still steals, that means he did not repent and he did not reform. If a thief has really repented, sincerely repented, then he will stop stealing forever. فَإِن تَابَ وَأَصْلَحَ Same thing, if these two people who have committed zina, if they have repented to Allah sincerely, and they have reformed themselves, corrected themselves, فَأَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمَا Leave them alone. Now don't bother them. Now it is a command of Allah that don't bother them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمًا Indeed, Allah is ever accepting of repentance and merciful. No matter how grave a crime that one may have committed, when that person decides to sincerely repent to Allah, then Allah's door of mercy and accepting of repentance is open. He is oft forgiving and he is the most merciful, the most kind, and he turns to those who turn to him in repentance. Tawab means someone who turns to those who turn to Allah, who turn to Him in repentance. They repent to Allah. Who do we repent to? We repent to Allah. Oh Allah, I have done this terrible crime and I turn to you and I seek your forgiveness and your pardon. So for such people, Allah is there to accept their repentance and He's also merciful to them. إن الله كان تواب الرحيم إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء. Now in the next two verses, Allah subhanahu wa taala explains the concept of repentance, توبة. Who is it for? And from whom it will be accepted, and from whom it will not be accepted. So Allah says, إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة. The repentance is accepted by Allah only for those who do wrong in ignorance. If someone is doing wrong intentionally and repeatedly and knowingly and purposely, then there is no promise of forgiveness for that person. But those who repent, who have done something wrong by ignorance, unknowingly then such people their repentance is accepted by Allah these people and then they repent soon after so they don't wait years to repent if they have done something wrong and realize that they have done something wrong they turn to Allah min qareeb means soon after that فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ It is those to whom Allah will turn in forgiveness. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا And Allah is ever knowing and wise. وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّيَاتِ But repentance is not accepted from those who continue to do evil deeds up until حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ When death comes to one of them. When death comes to them, they say, Inni tubtul an. Qala inni tubtul an. They say, Now I repent. So they continue to do the wrong things. They continue to follow the path of sins and disobedience until death reaches one of them, until death catches one of them. And then that person says, Inni tubtul an. Now I repent. Or now I repented to Allah. Allah says, وَلَيْسَتِ tawbah." There is no tawbah for this person. This is not genuine tawbah. This is not real and sincere tawbah. A sincere tawbah is that which comes after the sin was committed and the sin was committed due to ignorance. وَلَلَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارِ Neither 